member's statement, the, the member from Burlington. Thank you, Speaker. It's my pleasure to rise in the House today to deliver my member statement. Recently, I visited Burlington's Grow for Change urban farm, launched in 2020 by Bunchberry Connections, along with combined contributions from the Molinero Group, Nurture Growth, Garden NV, private donations, and a dedicated team of volunteers. The urban farm grew and donated over 1,000 pounds of food to the local Burlington Food Bank in 2022. Located on a vacant lot in downtown Burlington, the urban farm started out as a two-year pilot project and has now been extended for a third year. The farm teaches the wider community about growing and harvesting food. It promotes relaxation, education, and biodiversity in the centre of our community. Connecting people to nature, the farm intentionally promotes and provides evidence-based positive mental health programs, workshops, and volunteer opportunities. With access to the right resources, people become empowered by their own abilities and gain the confidence to fulfill their potential. The urban farm is a place in the city to escape, to promote food diversity, and to tackle food insecurity. Thank you. The member statement. The member from University of Rosedale. Thank you, Speaker. Education workers make our public schools great. They clean our yards. They maintain our buildings. They supervise our kids at lunchtime. They clean our classrooms. They help our youngest kids and our kids with disabilities. We know them by our first, their first name. They are part of our school community. Education workers earn an average of $39,000 a year. Many work two jobs to make ends meet. Some have to go to food banks because their pay doesn't go far enough, especially in this inflationary crisis we have. Many are leaving the profession. I want our kids in class. Everyone wants our kids in class. No one wants a strike. That is why our schools need to receive the funding that they need so our kids can get an excellent education. That is why this government needs to stop violating our chartered protected rights of all workers and stop this bullying behaviour and get back to the negotiating table. That's why this government needs to use the surplus that they have in their budget to negotiate a fair contract with workers, because that is the right thing to do for our kids, it's the right thing to do for workers, and it's the right thing to do for the people of Ontario. Thank you. Member statement, the member from Halliburton Kawartha Leakes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise in the House today in recognition of 4-H Show Your Colours Day. I am proud to be sporting my 4-H green and appreciate all my colleagues who've joined me today to support an organization that has shaped numerous lives across Ontario. Today, we celebrate all the incredible things 4-H youth have done and are doing in their communities, and how the experience they gained through this program enables them to be responsible, caring, and contributing young leaders. For more than 100 years, 4-H programs across Ontario have shaped future leaders and great citizens, and this is why they have been one of the most well-respected youth-serving organizations in Canada. I want to recognize and appreciate the tireless efforts of 4-H leaders who work to provide valuable learn-to-do-by-doing experience for members of all ages. 4-H Ontario plays such an important role in leadership development in our province, so to 4-H organizers and volunteers, please keep up the fantastic work you do to enable young people to pledge their head, heart, hands and health to better living. I wish everyone a very happy 4-H Show Your Colours Day, and I'm a proud 4-H member too. Thank you. Member from Pike, Parkdale High Park. I'm going to recap the actions of this Conservative government in the last 48 hours in this legislature. 
On Monday, the government preemptively tabled back-to-work legislation for education workers, using the notwithstanding clause yet again to trample over the constitutional rights of workers. Then the government announced at the very last minute that the debate on back-to-work legislation will begin the next day at 5 a.m., just like that. The same afternoon, we were all scheduled to debate the new government bill on post-secondary institutions, but they simply decided, with no notice, to adjourn the House, just like that. The following day, a debate and vote on a motion to double social assistance rates that was scheduled for 3 p.m. got changed to 1 p.m., sending stakeholders who had planned to be in the House to participate scrambling and rescheduling their day on very short notice. Just like that. Let people figure it out. This government creates so much unnecessary chaos and disruption. The same disruptive pattern we see in our education system, in our health care system, in all public services, in everything that this government is meant to take care of. Speaker, I am worried. I'm worried that this government is running unchecked, with no regard for the Constitution, no respect for rights, with no compassion, and with no basic operational competency. They're making decisions with no consideration that their decisions have repercussions on people's lives. They act like they're some billionaire who thinks they can do what they feel like. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Brampton West. Uh, thank you so much, Speaker. <laughs> November is Diabetes Awareness Month. During Diabetes Awareness Month, it is important that we continue to raise awareness and continue to make life better for those impacted by diabetes. Diabetes is a medical condition that affects 11.7 million Canadians across the country. Diabetes is a disease in which one's body does not produce provide or cannot properly use the in insulin in which makes which causes blood glucose levels to be too high. Mr. Speaker, Sir Frederick Benting, a Canadian who alongside Charles Best discovered insulin, which marked a crucial step towards improving life for those impacted with diabetes. We come long way with the progress of new medical management and technology that assists with blood glucose monitoring. However, Mr. Speaker, more work can still be done to improve the lives of people living with diabetes, and that is why it is crucial that we continue to raise awareness and work toward finding a cure. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Next, the member for Toronto Centre. Thank you, Speaker. I'm proud to rise to share my member's statement today, especially as the MPP for Canada's largest 2S LGBT community. I want to acknowledge that a week ago, Canada marked the 30th anniversary of a landmark LGBTQ human rights case led by Michelle Douglas, a young military officer who took on the national defense and won. In 1992, Michelle Douglas and NDP MP Sven Robinson worked together to put together an end to the LGBT purge, a shameful 40-year period history in our nation's history. That purge lasted until 1990s. LGBT members of the Canadian Armed Forces, the RCMP, and the Federal Public Service were systematically discriminated against, harassed, and oftentimes fired as a matter of sanctioned practice. The careers and self-esteem of a generation of young people were destroyed. An estimated 9,000 victims were denied benefits, severance, pensions, and opportunities and promotions if they managed to keep their jobs. This horrifying period of, in Canadian history also resulted in suicide, HIV, fear, depression, PTSD, addiction, disownment, criminalization, rejection, isolation, erasure, and many other painful, enduring experiences. It was an honour to be invited to sit at the head table with Michelle and her family at the 30th anniversary gala this weekend. It is now my honour to invite all the members of the Ontario Legislative Assembly to join me in publicly acknowledging and applauding Michelle Douglas for her history-making history in making Canada a more inclusive and just country. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Glengarry Prescott Russell. Thank you, Speaker. As many of my colleagues have done, I would like to begin by congratulating those who have been elected during the municipal elections in my riding. 
Some are new, some have been re-elected. I would like to congratulate you all and to wish you all the best in municipal politics. Also, I would like to congratulate all of those who ran for office. I would also like to take the chance to thank my colleagues who named me director of the Parliamentary Assembly of Francophonie. Following this nomination, I will be leading a new role that will allow me to promote Francophonie in America. I was in the 34th Regional Assembly of Francophonie in Europe, accompanied by my homologues of different European countries. We had several very interesting discussions about freedom of speech and several other topics that are also a priority for us Ontarians. We will continue to promote Francophonie at parliamentary level throughout the world. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Haldeman Norfolk. As I told members of this chamber yesterday, I have the unique position of being able to see legislation before this House from an independent lens. I can be, I can be genuine in my approach, and I have nothing to protect or defend but those interests of my constituents. And I'm a bit cranky with what's going on here. Who here actually cares about our education workers? Who here actually cares about our students? We have one side of this House who cares about getting even with unions and is again threatening the notwithstanding clause. And we have another side that encourages political action. I will give credit to my colleague from Guelph, who yesterday encouraged this House to work together, and I was heartened to hear that negotiations have picked up again. I do find it convenient that there's been all sorts of talk the past few days about the need to have our, our students in school. Many of the ministers opposite will know that throughout the pandemic, I was the person coming to them very concerned about the mental health of our young people. My concerns at the time fell on deaf ears. A word of warning to our education workers. If you decide to walk off the job and the lives of students are severely impacted, you will be blamed and your union will wear the wrath of Ontario parents. And at the same time, the union will have given this government exactly what they wished for. Merry Christmas. To this government, to QP, stop using some of the province's lowest paid workers and stop using our kids as political pawns. Speaker, it's time every person in this chamber comes together to, don't, to tone down the rhetoric, to get the job done. In my maiden speech, I asked members of this House to do politics differently. Today would be a good day to start. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Kitchener South Hespler. Thank you, Speaker. I'm, uh, I'm standing today to, uh, to celebrate the, uh, the rebranding of a wonderful organization from Cambridge. Uh, it used to have the uh, very geographically long name of the Family Counseling Centre of Cambridge and North Dumfries, uh, which didn't exactly roll off the tongue. This is a group that started in 1940 uh, in Cambridge in response to the uh, economic um, problems and grief that families were suffering as a result of World War II. Uh, it began with knitting socks and, uh, and making meals and then expanded uh, becoming the uh, geographically long name in the 1960s. Uh, during my campaign, I had the pleasure of meeting their director, Cameron Dearlove. Um, our first meeting was supposed to be half an hour, and I was there for about two hours. Um, an absolutely wonderful man who does uh, incredible work in the community. One of the exciting things this group does is work with recovery supportive housing, uh, which as a Crown, I really enjoyed as their entire concept is that those struggling with addictions do not succeed uh, unless they are in supportive housing. They they have the uh, honor of, in the past four years, having had 99 people go through their 30-bed program, with 70 of those remaining in stable housing today. Uh, their rebranding is now to Porchlight uh, Counseling Services, with the idea being that when you come home from a long journey, seeing that someone has left the porch light on for you shows that you are home and that somebody cares, and uh, I want to congratulate them for the work they do. Thank you. Well done. Member statements. Member statements. Okay. 
Introduction. Oh, I'm sorry. No, there's a member statement. I apologize. I rise today to recognize the important contribution of Wood Green Community Services to my con constituency of Scarborough Centre. Today in the gallery, uh, we have about 13 members here from the organization, and I want to recognize them for the work that they have been doing. Wood Green, who have served uh, close to 40,000 people each year in one of Toronto's largest social service agency and is the largest non-municipal affordable housing provider. Wood Green has over 75 programs and service that tackles the social determinants of health and help vulnerable population get out of poverty and homelessness and into education, employment, and sustainable housing. These services include helping people to find safe and affordable housing, supporting seniors to live independently, assisting international trained professionals entering the Toronto job market, delivering programs for children, youth, and assisting newcomers with, settle, with settling into Canadian life. They also focus on workforce development and creating opportunities for employment and financial empowerment which are key components of social determinants of health. For example, Will Green Financial Empowerment Service helped thousands of struggling Ontarian households stabilize and rebuild their financial health. They offer one-on-one -on -one counseling, free tax clinic, budget workshops, debt management, and other resources to support community members. These financial counseling and support services can create a pathway for a different population, including Ontario Work recipient, to better understand the financial process of transitioning from social assistance to employment. And I want to thank them very much for the work that they have done over the years. Thank you very much. Thank you. Introduction.